What is going on, YouTube people? Today, another edition of the Weekly Sports Card Market Update. News, nonsense, charts, graphs, a little bit of everything. As you're all aware, we've been counting down to the National for about two months now. We are 10 days. 10 days. One Weekly Sports Card Market Update away. Basically a week, because when we get the next week... um. You know, the show starts on Wednesday. So at the time you're all watching this episode next week, we're basically just days away. It's just Monday and Tuesday. You just got to get through Monday and Tuesday. And then, boom, we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, you know, I did the video this week about being kind of meh on, you know, not much to chase. Nothing really tickling my fancy right now on the sports card side of things. That being said. I am still ridiculously excited for this show. Once again, even if I don't end up buying a card, just from the social aspect of it, seeing friends, taking it all in. Uh, and then, you know, as I mentioned, you know, Fanatics Fest right after that, a few weeks later, three weeks after, not two weeks. But yeah, 10 days. Is anyone making last minute plans to either attend National or Fan Fest? Is anyone, like, is the FOMO machine kicking in the overtime as we tick down to this event and are, are you trying to throw something together to sneak into either this show or New York last minute? I know every time I skip something like this, uh, that's how I always get, you know, when I skipped culture collision last fall, when cards HQ opened, uh, I couldn't make the travel. And then I was trying, I was doing everything possible to figure that thing out up until the very last minute. And that's just the way that I work. You know, that, that, that's the reason why I booked, uh, Fanatics Fest in New York, because I knew if I didn't go, I would be kicking myself leading up to it and running around trying to put something together last minute. So that's just the way my brain works. But yeah, 10 days, 10 days away. We are almost there, folks. We are almost there. Speaking of the national, let's, let's mix in a news story here with a little countdown to the national talk off the top. Obviously, the biggest story of the week happened last, basically to close out or to start the beginning of the week. That was the theft at the Dallas Card Show. Uh, there has not been any updates really since the follow-up video I did with the reward money and the additional footage. I did see it caught national news. It was on Today. Uh, it was on a bunch of different Fox and CBS, NBC stations, pretty much. A ton of different news channels have picked up on this story. So it is out there far and wide. Uh, I think they have enough for facial recognition tech. My theory, and this is just my theory. I have nothing to back these up or back this up. I wonder if these cards are even still in the country. You know, I, I, I have to wonder if the cards are still even in the United States or if they're just long gone. There is enough imaging of those folks that I feel like you'd be able to track someone down or someone would have recognized them by now in the card space. You know, the, the card scene is quite large, but it can feel that way at least sometimes. When you have that many cameras and that many clear images, a lot of people know everybody else. Like it feels large, but it's it's actually really not that big. Uh, it's really not in the grand scheme of things. It's not that big. Everybody knows somebody knows somebody knows somebody. So for four people to just appear out of nowhere and no one to know, you know, I don't know who that person is. I don't know who that person is when their face is literally blasted all across the internet. And we're talking even outside of the social media sphere of the hobby. Um, just seems a little bit crazy to me that they have not been, uh, that there's been no breaks in that case yet. And now listen, maybe there has been and the cops just aren't saying anything because maybe they're getting close or they're doing maybe more background investigation or maybe they're interviewing people. Who knows? We we don't know. And we won't know until something actually breaks saying that they've been arrested or found or whatever. Hopefully they get the cards back. Hopefully everything gets made whole there. Uh, that's probably a big ask at this point, but hopefully people can pull it off. That being said, uh, Collect posted an article shortly after all that shenanigans went down that the National is going to up security, it sounds like, uh, in regards to the show. So we'll see what that looks like uh, next week. 
when we are roaming around the show floor. But that is good to hear. Uh, you know, they've always had the Nationals always had a decent security presence. Like there's I've always seen police officers walking around and I am sure there are tons of plain clothes as well that you don't even know that they're officers or feds. Uh, the FBI has been well known to peruse the National many a times. So hopefully there are no major issues coming out of the Cleveland National in regards to theft or nonsense. Um, everyone's going to be on guard. This just happened. Everybody is going to be on guard with their stuff. At least I hope so. I hope so. So you'd be pretty foolish to try to pull something off there. Before we get out of 2D, I'd be remiss not to mention Com C, sponsor of the weekly sports card market update and today's video. They will be set up at the national. So if you have things that you need to drop off, that you need to get into them and you don't want to ship it out, Drop it off to their booth. I very well may do that. I usually ship, uh, but I think I have a, a small little stack building up. I think I'm just going to do a drop off. I'm going to do an in-person drop off. I've never used that service before with them. So I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a whirl, see how it works out. Swing by the old booth, package up a nice little long box. I probably got a couple hundred cards ready to rock and roll. And Keep in mind, if you have a Com C account and you end up ripping boxes for wrapper redemptions or anything at the show, you can walk those over and just hand them to Com C and send it off for anything that you want to sell on the platform and don't even have to worry about shipping it. Just penny sleeve it up. Penny sleeve it up and put it in a box, print out some paperwork, and I think they even have, uh, I could be wrong on this, I thought in the past they had stations at the uh, booth itself to be able to print your stuff out there at the National. So... Swing by the Com C booth, check them out at the National, get some cards sent off to them. One other quick note before we get back to things. The first fantasy football league on Underdog is filled and is well underway. It's almost finished, actually, at this point. I went ahead and created a second one. I'm going to post it in the description to this video. Uh, it'll be here first. Normally, I post on social first. This time, I'm posting it in the video first. So if you want to join... Uh, if you're already an underdog member, just fire away. If you're not, there's a promo code and stuff down there to sign up where you get a deposit match bonus. So go ahead and sign up. Get in the next one. They are a blast. Slow draft, eight hours per pick. Nice and easy. So I'll throw that down there for a few days, see how many people join. Uh, and then if it doesn't fill within like three or four days, I'll then start sharing it around social. But I'll get everyone that watches the video first crack at it. All right, let's get into some more newsy stuff. Uh, I will probably end up covering this this week in a video. I was honestly waiting for a Lesko breakdown because this is a massive document. But shout out to Simon466 Cards. Uh, go over and check out his channel. He's got 476 subscribers. Definitely deserves some more. He did a great breakdown. There is a new lawsuit against Beckett. A former employee is suing Beckett basically because they did not get paid out on the acquisition of their company and were wrongfully terminated, allegedly. So uh, I'll save the breakdown for when Lesko does one, or you could go check out Simon's video, but that's basically the gist of it. And there are some juicy things in there, some real juicy stuff in there, uh, especially things around like Beckett was for sale earlier, which I had heard before. The problem when they were for sale earlier, at least the gist of it that I got was, once again, Beckett has a lot of ancillary nonsense kind of tacked onto the sides of them. All these little sub companies, you got CBCS, you got Beckett, you got the VHS, you got the, the Vault, you got Beckett Collect, like all this extra nonsense. It's not just buying the grading company. You have to take on all this other nonsense. And that's what people didn't want to do. People just want Beckett. They don't want all the extra crap. And I think that was the rub the last time they were for sale. Now, if they go bankrupt or something crazy happens, uh, that might be a little bit of a different story. But go check out Simon's video. Or like I said, I may end up doing something on this later in the week. But there is definitely some juicy, juicy stuff in there. Speaking of creators, buddy of the channel, Michael Ham, He is just a couple subscribers away from 2K. Go give him the little bump. Just the little bump. He's made appearances on the videos on various lives. Uh, he'll be hanging out with us in the National in a couple weeks. I caught his little, he does great little car videos where he just chats in the car. And he mentioned he was just short of 2K. So let's get him there. He's at 1.98. Maybe he's there before 
this video even goes live. Speaking of the National, we got some information on redemptions and what the various companies are doing. Now, Panini, they do the black box, white box thing. You do need to make an appointment. So if you have Panini redemptions that you want to trade in, make sure you make an appointment. Slots are limited. In the past, I think they've done appointments and you can just line up. This year, it makes it sound like they are doing appointment only. Yeah, pre-registration is required. So you will need, they will not be accommodating walk-ups, which I think they have done in the past. So if you're expecting to just walk up and do this, uh, that will not be the case this year. They usually tend to be pretty generous on white and black boxes for the trade-ins. I've never done it before. I've only had one Panini Redemption ever and ended up getting fulfilled. Now, the new twist this year is Tops is getting in on the game. Uh, I wish I would have known this before I submitted for a replacement for my Vlad Auto. Now, I did okay on that. I got the Anthony Volpe uh, Tops Black Rookie Auto, which seemed like a pretty fair to maybe even a slight upgrade uh, from what I had in regards to the Vlad Tops Gold. But I would have done this just for the content rather than trade it in. It would have been fun to get the black box. Now, this is different than Panini's. Um, I, <laughs> it's almost like a repack that you're trading in for your redemptions. Uh, essentially, you get one box for every $100 of redemption value that you have. And the card values in the redemption boxes range from 50 to $7,500. So you could actually exchange in a $100 card and get a $50 card back on the blind box. Now, I don't know how many are at the floor value. I don't know how many are at the max value. I don't know who's coming up with the values. I have no idea. I don't know if these are going to be stamped with like a... Um, white box 101 or black box 101 kind of how panini does it or if they are just going to be whatever uh, i don't know if this image i was trying to see so what i'm looking at here is like and, and this just could be a mock-up image i don't know uh but this harrison ford right here is from star wars stellar that has a top sticker it looks like on the top yeah that's a tops logoed sticker Star Wars Stellar comes sealed and it has a sticker on it, but it says Star Wars on it. So that one's definitely going to look different. Now, I don't know if when you get a redemption from Tops, uh, if it comes with the same Star Wars sticker or a Tops sticker, I think it still comes with a Star Wars sticker. So these might be labeled slightly differently. I don't know. We can't see the backs of the cards. But yeah, what do you boys and girls think about basically a repack? that you could trade your redemptions in for. It's kind of cool. Like I said, if I just had that random $100 card, I would absolutely do it. If I had a bigger card, I feel less great about this. If I had a $1,000 card and they're going to give me 10 of these things, I think I would rather just have a $1,000 card. I don't know. This, this, I don't know. I think this benefits the people that have lower valued redemptions, like around that $100 or $200 thing. Sure, if I had a $100 redemption, I'll take a blind stab at maybe I get a $1,000 card out of the blind box. But if I had an, a higher value redemption and you're going to give me a pile of these things, I don't know. That what that side of it feels a little more eh. Whereas if I have the lower end, you know, risk it for the biscuit and go for the gamble. I don't know. Curious for your thoughts on that one. Uh, the other thing that's kind of been making the rounds this past week, the Jordan PSA 1010 autos with inscriptions and all the hullabaloo about you know how much was offered and what are these things worth and this that and all the other nonsense uh, i believe these are going to be at the national i am curious to see what these look like in person because i must admit in these photos they look meh uh the dark blue pen or marker sharpie on a dark background card not the best choice uh, some sort of lighter colored paint pen or something, even maybe even a silver Sharpie would have looked probably a lot better on this, in my opinion. But I am not a big in-person autograph on card guy. I know there's, there's a whole science to that in regards to the pen and the colors uh, and all that nonsense. I had those ones signed by Dan Dos Santos at Heroes Con. 
Uh, I let him pick the colors. He's an artist signing his own cards. He knows better than I do, and they turned out fantastic. Uh, he color matched them beautifully. But this, I don't know. Is it cool? Sure. It's a PSA 10 with a 10 signature on a rookie. You know, is it a hundred bajillion million quadrillion dollar card? I have no idea. I don't play in this range. I really don't. Personally, I don't think the cards look that great with the signature, at least in photos. If they're at the National, I'll take a look at them in person. Maybe I'll even get some video of them and see what these things look like. But in the photos, they don't look that great. It's a cool card. It's a cool story. I'd still really love to know how the private signing thing all went down and some details on that. But is what it is. These are cards that I can only look at that I can never actually afford. Big thing this week, and I still don't have a plan for it yet because I have no boxes pre-ordered. I am sure I will FOMO into something come Wednesday. Topps Chrome Baseball comes out this week. Much ballyhooed, much talked about. $400 for a jumbo. $200 for a hobby box. These are slightly cheaper than secondary market prices. I believe Blowout, last I looked, or David Adams, uh, was sitting at a little over $400 for a jumbo and a little over $200 for a hobby. These are up on Fanatics for a product drop. The increase in price, increase in checklist is definitely a little, definitely sucked the wind out of my sails with this product, I'll say. Uh, we still don't have any idea what Tops is doing for wrapper redemptions for the National. I assume they're going to do them. To me, that's the play if you could be patient and wait the extra week. I don't know why they just didn't hold this for one more week and drop this at the National. I think there would have been a lot more hype around the product, even though it is going to be pretty hype to begin with. This will be the thing a lot of people will be chasing. You know, am I going to FOMO into a hobby box for 200 bucks and then go cash in a wrapper redemption for it? Probably. Let's, let's all be honest here. Am I going to FOMO into a box next week when release day to have a video to go up? Yeah, let's be honest here. Uh, if something locally pops up and I can get a decent deal on one, I might stop by and snag one. I, I, I'm not 100% locked in on that yet. So I was a little curious to see what last year's Topps Chrome boxes were selling for. So I went in the market movers, link in the description down below, charts and graphs time, just to kind of poke in and see what this stuff was going for. And basically right on point from a secondary market perspective, jumbos from last year are going for 400 tops. Chrome hobby boxes are going for 200. And the thing to keep in mind here, I ran this over the last 180 days. So this goes back to the beginning of January. This is post MVP buyback. So MVP buybacks aren't allocated into this. Um, obviously the rookie class, we have a little bit of a bigger view on it. Now Gunnar Henderson has been absolutely amazing and has probably helped keeping this product afloat. But Corbin Carroll, he had a fantastic year last year, has been absolute crap this year. So that's where we sit for last year's prices. Plenty of sales. This is where this has been running through. I'm just a little bit curious if I back it up a little bit. Uh, and yeah, basically been this way for a while. They did get a little bit higher uh, towards late summer last year and into the winter as we were getting closer to that MVP thing. Uh, and then they cooled off ever so slightly, but basically this is where they've been right out of the gate pretty much this entire time. Now at release last year, they were cheaper, but once we got through that initial release wave and, you know, top sold out of them and all that stuff, and then it kind of went to the secondary market setting the price. This is kind of basically where we've been for a hot minute now on this product. So we'll see what 2024 does. I don't know that there's a Gunnar Henderson in this class. That's yet to be seen. But it is a deep checklist. Some of the guys have underperformed, as we're well aware of. But there are a lot of bites at the apple. It, I hate that the checklist was increased to 300 cards. It's the only part that kind of vexes me. Even, and in addition to that, the increased price point as well. Speaking of, uh, just as a reminder, I feel like most people that watch this channel are smart enough to know not to chase anything super crazy immediately post-release. I just wanted to kind of throw this out there as some reminders. This is PSA 10 Gunnar Henderson's from last year's 2023 Tops Chrome. I just picked some of the random mainline refractors and like a random numbered one or two just to give you an idea. Now, keep in mind, Gunnar has been absolutely fantastic, having an amazing season. So put that into perspective on what these are selling for in a PSA 10 
versus what some of this nonsense is going to sell for out of the gates next week. Because we all know what happens. Product gets ripped. Prices are sky high. And then they'll end up filtering down. So this is just your reminder of that. Uh, this is his Magenta Sparkle Speckle Refractor. Uh, I forget what this one's numbered out of. Out of 350 In a PSA 10, that sells for 155 bucks. Keep that in mind when you're chasing Ellie De La Cruz and Wyatt Lankford's next week. His just base refractor goes for $100. Prism refractor also goes for about $100. Uh, this is his magenta refractor out of $399. Goes for $100. Now, that one hasn't sold in a couple of weeks, but still. Uh, I find it amusing that that one out of $399 basically sells for the same as the base refractor uh, with a way different pop count. That just goes to show you that just because something is in a random swirly color doesn't make a difference. Last but not least, just the basic pink refractor, the retail parallel, that's going for about 80 bucks in a PSA 10. So just file those numbers away. And just as a good rule of thumb, you know, look, if you're chasing a player from this year's class, go compare it to what Gunner is selling for. And if it's selling for way more than that, just wait, just wait. Outside of a very few key cards, you have plenty of time to track this stuff down. Some more baseball stuff. I was curious to see how one Mr. Juan Soto's prices were going lately uh, with him having a pretty strong start to the season. He has, or not so much he, but the Yankees in general have slowed way down the last couple of weeks. Uh, so have his card prices actually as well. Now, I, I ran this back 180 days. This takes us all the way back to mid-January. His PSA 10 is up ever so slightly. The PSA 9 is down ever so slightly. But you definitely see he got off to that amazing start and is still been playing pretty good. Uh, and he got a pretty decent run up. But as the Yankees have cooled off, his card prices have cooled off. And we see that as well. Like his PSA 10 got up to that's 2.75. Uh, this one's got to be close to yep, almost 3K. And the last sale here is back down to 2.3. Uh, he had another home run, I think, today. Um, recording on Saturday afternoon slash evening. So... Still having an absolutely fantastic season, getting a little overshadowed by Aaron Judge. But I think a lot of this is due more to the Yankees as a team just cooling down. Uh, we'll see where he ends up signing in the offseason, if he stays there or not. Speaking of the Yankees, uh, I should have talked about this last week, and I missed it. Someone in the comments called me out for it. Good on them. Ben Rice tops now. Uh, <laughs> this card is wild. Uh, so this is Ben Rice's first tops now card that came out. This is just the base version that went for $110. Ben Rice, perfectly fine player. He is not the second coming of Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, he's just your average, uh, I'd probably say like an above average catching slash first base process or prospect. Uh, has a little bit of power, it seems like. Not great in batting average, it seems like. Just a, a perfectly fine major league player. His prices are crazy on this particular Tops Now card. And this all boils down to everyone's least favorite subject in school, economics, supply, and demand. Now, you may ask, why is a base Tops Now card selling for 100 bucks? This is an $8 card. Anyone could have bought it as many of them as they wanted to. Well, not many people bought them. The print run on this, I believe, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's fairly low. I think it's in a couple thousands. It's not that crazy. The other thing, this, at the time of printing, now more Tops Now cards of his have come out and they're not selling for anywhere near this. This was his first card ever. He did not have a first Bowman. He had never been in any other set. He had never been in anything else, to the best of my knowledge. I believe this was his first mainstream Tops card that existed. So the prices for it are extremely high due to that nature. If you were smart enough to realize this, and you bought a bunch of these things, props to you. Well done. The numbered ones are insane. Here is, I believe this is, yeah, the red to 10 went for two grand. Holy smokes. This was just July 13th. This was earlier today. This ended. I mean, absolutely crazy stuff on this. These are basically going for 100 bucks, 75 to 100 bucks uh, all day long. And like I said, I think the print runs in the 2000s-ish on this one, between two and 3,000 maybe, but absolutely crazy stuff. And these haven't even hit 
PSA yet. I'll be curious to see what these do in a PSA 10. Tops now, notoriously grayed, really, really clean. So if you're curious why a random Ben Rice card is selling for that much, that's why, is because it is his first card ever, and they are fairly limited. So imagine, imagine a first Bowman of a player, like a first Bowman paper, because this is a paper card, of Dylan Cruz, but there was only 2,000 of them, and that's it. That's kind of what this is to a degree. Not for me. I'm not chasing this. I didn't buy any. I missed the boat. Smarter people than me. Last but not least on the baseball front, Paul Skeens. I was at a local show. Hartville is on Saturday. Uh, I have another local show today. Canton, they're, back, they're on the same weekend. They never usually do this, but because of the national, uh, they had to adjust the schedule. The Probably the number, I always keep my ears out when I'm walking around just to kind of hear like what people are asking for when they walk up the tables. The name I heard the most, Paul Skeens. A thousand percent Paul Skeens. It wasn't even close. The amount of people that I heard walking up to tables asking for, hey, do you have any Skeens? What Skeens stuff do you have? And not even not even necessarily looking for high-end autos, just like a first Bowman base or whatever. Uh, he had a near no-hitter this week. I mean, he pitched seven no-hit innings. They pulled him because of pitch count. I've said it every week. Guy's absolutely amazing. Please stay healthy. His stuff is going to be on absolute fire at the National, I have a feeling. Pittsburgh's only two hours from Cleveland. Uh, I have a feeling Skeen stuff will be very, very hot. If you're walking into that show with Skeen stuff, I have a sneaking suspicion you will not have a problem moving it. Uh, this is his base PSA 10 first Bowman, now up to $1,200 in a PSA 10. And you can just see, this is just over the last 30 days. This card's up 75%. Absolutely wild stuff for a pitcher. I mean, what would you rather own? This card for 1200 PSA 10 Skeens, or uh, where did it go? Which tab are we on? A Juan Soto PSA 9 for twelve for basically the same amount, 1200 bucks. PSA 9 Soto, pop 238 on that. Also pop 238 in the PSA 10. Or a Skeens, pop 460, double the population in a PSA 10. His print runs are way higher in 2023 than 2016. What would you rather have? PSA 10 Skeens or the PSA 9 Juan Soto? Listen, I get it. Skeens, FOMO, hype, all of it. Me personally, I'm taking the PSA 9 Soto. That's just me. What do I know? What do I know? Basketball. No football today since we did a, a big, I did a big football market recap video on Friday. So if you want football stuff and you missed that one, go check it out. Jalen Brunson gave one of the most insane contracts I have ever seen in regards to an extension with the Knicks. Uh, he took a massive pay cut. Uh, he actually got a small bump up in prices for it. Uh, what I, I went specifically to look at his card to see if that extension got any bumps because he's basically going to be a Nick legend now if he wasn't already. What struck me is I kind of, you know, whenever I go to look at this stuff, I look short term, I look medium term, and I look a little more long term just to kind of get a feel for what has been going on with the player, even if I don't show that window of the graph in the video. And what struck me here is, one, how much of a run-up he got into the playoffs, which wasn't surprising. I mean, that Knicks team was a blast. Everyone was loving them. And then how much that card fell off after they got bounced, and then now how it has started to creep back up again. Uh, this card, I'm not going to take the outlier sale here at 200 bucks, super low, but you have multiple sales here, 240, 240, 250. So basically 250 bucks right after they got eliminated. This card got up to multiple sales of over $400 or close to $400. So a pretty big haircut there today. You know, even if you don't take, let's look at, let's say we got a 315 there, a 300 there, a 300 there, and a 300 there, basically back up to 300 bucks. Nice little $50, $50 jump up from late May to the midsummer. And I have a feeling this contract extension might keep him slowly ticking up. We talked about it in that football video, the slow and steady tick up in pricing. And we are definitely seeing that with Brunson, who is going to be the face of the New York Knicks. And that is not necessarily a bad place to be. One last thing I wanted to check in on. Zion. Ja, kind of the same thing. Uh, over the last 60 days, up 30%, up 30%. Once again, just the slow and steady increases. You look at this week by week, 
you're not going to see this pop off. You look at it over a small or a little bit of a larger period of time and you see it slowly tick up. Now, a lot of it, especially in Jaws cases, we can kind of see ramping up, ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. Uh, Zion's a little bit different than that. Clearly getting a little bit of uptick here in the late summer months. So the two golden boys of the 2019 and the pandemic are getting a little bit of tick up in prices. Zion, outside of the plan championship game, actually had a pretty decent season last year. It sucks he got hurt in the playoffs. That's always going to be the thing with him. And then John Morant's John Morant. He's going to be ultra talented. People are going to fall in love with him. And the question is, is can he stay healthy and can he keep his head screwed on straight? That's all I got for you, boys and girls. Ten days to go. Catch you on the next one. Peace.